Bluebells! Welcome back to Sunday Brunch. In today's video, we're going to be finally starting our saint studies. And of course, <laughs> the very first saint that we are going to study is the beautiful Saint Philomena. And if you don't already know, I have a very special um, intercession with Saint Philomena personally. She is the beautiful saint that I picked for my confirmation. So she is my confirmation saint. And before we get into the amazing long-awaited video <laughs> and series that this will become, um, I want to apologize for the delay. Um, I had to keep changing the schedule around um, in regards to the saint studies and then also in terms of the, the term study for chapter one. Um, that is going to be coming very soon as well as another video in regards to prayer regimen. I want us to really hone um, the tools that we can have, not just in terms of textbook and learning um, and you know, really diving into scripture and pulling everything apart so we can really understand it. I want us to just as much, um, you know, really hone our skills that we will um, be able to rely on the more that we practice prayer and praying to God, because that is something that we should do every single day. And it can be daunting to some and confusing to others. And some people don't know where to start or what to say or how to do it. So I think another great um, asset within our prayer regimens would be every week we're going to have a prayer board that we're going to um, basically create together. So I have a big board that I had showcased in one of my previous videos. And um, every week I will look to the comment section and I will advise and implore anybody who's watching these um, these class videos, comment down something, whether it be a word, a phrase, or an idea for something that you feel you would like to pray on. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a prayer, or you can even have your own prayer written as well if you feel comfortable writing it in the comment section, and then I will add it to the prayer board. And then each month, we will go over the prayer board and every single day we will have a um, specific time where we pray the um, all the various ideas and themes together. And that might even be maybe live if that's something that uh, you guys are interested in. Um, but as long as we have enough people that will incorporate their own prayers and different things, whether it be health, other people's health, whether it be stress, something within the day-to-day -day of life, work, school, it doesn't matter what it is. If you're comfortable enough to write it down in the comments, feel free and I will absolutely include it in and um, within the prayer board. And of course, the first video that I do with that one, I will showcase my own prayers and different things that I've been praying on as of late and we'll do it together. So without further ado, because we have waited long enough, right? We are going to start our prayer in really, really vastly expanding on our prayer regimen while we are studying the saints, right? Because saint studies is not just being well-versed in who all the saints are, which there are so many, and they're amazing. And seeing all these beautiful, amazing people that have had such miracles happen in their lives, and their lives have been sustained so fulfillingly with their relationship with God and, and their personal healing journey and prayer journey and faith journey to finding God um, and or just completely loving him their whole lives. They're so inspiring. And no other religion but the Catholic Church um, signifies and highlights the saints um, because we venerate them and not a lot of people um, have that within their own denominations. So within Christianity, Catholicism is the only denomination uh, where we have intercessions with saints. 
So it's the beautiful St. Philomena. I'm not sure if you guys are familiar with the junk journal that I made. It's always usually in the background of my videos. Um, but I made this while I was in confirmation studies. Um, and I, I really wanted something very personal to um, bring with me as a keepsake, specifically in regards to the saint that I chose. And this is the, so I handmade this. <laughs> it was, um, they're, they're really actually easy to make. It looks like it would be complicated, but it's not. <laughs> so this is one of many of the junk journals that I have uh, created, but this one specifically is for St. Philomena. And there are different pictures that I have printed. So as you can see, this is a picture um, from a leaflet that I got. Um, I purchased and then this is a printout and then I also printed out many different pictures um, of her so you guys can see different references of what she looks like um, because you know in in regards to all of the saints we don't have pictures right you guys these are accounts of and from other people and I'm assuming different technology to have created how someone would have looked years and years and years ago. So there's a multitude of different um, pictures of her. And I printed a bunch out for you guys. So this is one. And this is going to be a beautiful segue into her story. And in this picture, we can see her depicted in a prison cell. And we see her holding a beautiful lily. We see her, um, they're on the floor here, there's the arrow and there, um, there's also, well, there's the anchor and there's arrows. There's two arrows, actually. Um, there's also a whip on the floor. So St. Philomena's story is a very brutal one. Um, she was such a beautiful light to so many people. Um, so the story goes, her parents tried for years to have a child and they could not have one. And they had previously worshiped some false idol. I'm not 100% sure on which one. I'm not sure if it had anything to do with um, culturally where they were, which was um, Greece. Um, so I'm not sure if it has to do with within in regards to their culture and where they resided in in this time period. Um, but their parents or her parents were very adamant about having a child and they wanted one so badly that they prayed and prayed and prayed to their false idol and it did not work, obviously. So something had turned their, their attention towards Christ. And that is when they started to purge away the evil and the darkness and hone their, their wants and their prayers and their sorrow and suffering to God and offer it to him. And they were blessed with the beautiful St. Philomena. And St. Philomena's name actually um, translates to daughter of light. <clears throat> so that is the symbol or those are the symbols that you guys will always see in regards to her. You will always see the anchor and the arrows and the lilies. So these are symbols of her virtues and her suffering. And we will get to that. So um, let's see here. <clears throat> Saint Philomena, what, her body was found years and years and years after her death. Okay, so in 1805, about a young priest um, from a diocese in Na Naples um, had requested from the Vatican, actually, um, to obtain a relic for the new altar for a church in Mangiano. And he felt there was some spiritual affinity within and where her remains were. So his um, plea was accepted. And the relics had recently had been discovered of her and were, they went back with him. 
which is something that is so interesting. So before her remains were translated to the church, they were actually put on display in Naples. Um, and then immediately after that, you guys, there were so many reports of miraculous healing. So the relics arrived in about 1805. It was on August the 11th, which is pretty cool because just some rundown. Her feast day is August 11th. Now, if you are someone that, like myself, follows the liturgical calendar and is always looking on the feast days for different saints and the Catholic um, holidays, which we, of course, will have studies on as well. Um, her feast day is on the 11th of August. However, she was actually originally put on the liturgical calendar and then years later removed because of lack of proof um, within regards to her story, which is very interesting. Um, she was canonized in 1837, but it's very confusing how, um, you know, there is such a veneration and reverence for saints and the veneration of saints and how they um, could potentially become one and are canonized as one. Um, so like I always say, Mother Angelica should be canonized as a saint. There needs to be miracles surrounding that individual um, and a devotion to God throughout the duration of their life while they lived. And somebody can only become and declare a saint after their passing, if you didn't know that. So when it comes to St. Philomena, you know, her entire story is so riveting and also very um, sad. So St. Philomena actually had discovered um, Christianity through her parents beautifully. And she was the daughter of a king and her dad was the king of Corfu in Greece. So when the emperor Diocletian of Rome threatened her father's kingdom with war, he actually traveled to Rome with his family in order to to order peace and obtain it. Um, so St. Philomena was very, very devout within her faith and her love for God that she actually had vowed her virginity to Christ. So let's unpack that a little. There are many different vocations within and surrounding the Catholic Church that one can take upon themselves and that could potentially be their path. A vocation is something that you, it's its another word for choose or loosely, I would say career, but not technically. So for example, when two people get married, right? A, a husband and a wife, that is a vocation of marriage. For some men, they will choose the priesthood and that is another vocation, the, the vocation of holy orders and being a priest. Um, there's so many different kinds. There are women that choose to be nuns, and then there are also women who choose to consecrate themselves to God and um, vow to a life of celibacy and give themselves to their faith in, in such a beautiful, enamoring way. So when the emperor Diocletian saw how beautiful St. Philomena was, he actually asked her um, to marry him. Now, mind you guys, this was a completely different time um, period. So we have to understand how vastly different this way was. Um, she was about 13 years old when she was murdered, um, just so you guys are aware. Um, very, very sad. So Diocletian had asked St. Philomena to marry him, and she refused him. And because of this, he tortured her. He tortured her and continuously asked her for her hand in marriage. And she would continuously refuse saying she was saving and consecrating herself to God and wanted to completely give herself to her faith and to her creator. And he did not like that very much, um, Diocletian, the, the, Rome, the emperor of Rome. Um, so she ended up being drowned with an anchor as one way of trying to kill her. Um, so she was tied with rope with an anchor attached and thrown 
uh, into a river and um, the, the anchor was tied around her neck. And you guys, two angels raised her out of the sea. And when this happened, she was shot with arrows. And then this also failed to kill her. So, and all of these amazing pieces of her story are according to a nun's vision. Um, and then th these are the day her relics were installed um, in Italy. And this is when the nun was seeing these, these visions that St. Villamina was giving her. Um, so her discovery of her body, her bones in the catacombs um, were in 1802. Um, so she wasn't brought to uh, Mangiano until 1805. Um, but it's, it's absolutely amazing. The fact that the miracle had started literally right after um, her discovery. So in 1833, um, a Neapolitan nun, um, Sister Maria Luisa di Gesù, claimed to have a vision of Philomena who relayed her life story. According to her vision, Philomena was the daughter of the king. And then this is how we have all of the pieces of her story. So it's, it's quite um, a heart-wrenching story. After she had been, um, she had been scourged. So everything kind of escalated, you guys. She had been scourged and then she was um, drowned. And then when that didn't work, she was shot with arrows. And then when that didn't work, she was, um, I think this happened within regards three days, which is very, very similar to a certain someone else's story that we know. Hmm? Yes, right? <laughs> Interesting. Um, so for three days, she would go through these horrendously, disgustingly painful traumas. And then angels would literally heal her to the point where it's like nothing had ever happened. Um, obviously, the memory of the pain, I'm assuming she had, but she was completely healed and unscathed from the terrible things that was happening. And then the final that had happened was um, she was de decapitated, basically. Um, so just to kind of <laughs> make this a little lighter, I wanna slightly go over her patronage. So St. Philomena is the patron saint of a wide variety of people and causes. Among these are babies and children, those trying to conceive, right? This is shedding light on her parents and her age desperate or forgotten causes, prisoners, virgins, and youth. So she was a prisoner because this guy didn't like the fact that she had um, refused his advances. Um, she's quite literally the Greek princess. <laughs> and um, I had mentioned before, her name literally means daughter of light in Greek because the words philia and then the word luminous. Of course, I'm not pronouncing it the way someone within that regard could, but I tried my best. Um, so yeah, so then also in, uh, in addition to the lilies, you will see here that you see around her head, she wears this beautiful crown. Oftentimes you will see roses um, where St. Philomena is honored and respected, whether it be a crown of white roses, red roses, or both of those colors. So it's so beautiful. I have so many different books, you guys. This is one book that I had uh, just picked up. Uh, one of my big book hauls <laughs> that I, I posted a picture of. Um, this is the book In Defense of Purity. This is such an amazing book, you guys. And I feel like we actually have to do like a book club where we I literally read chapter to chapter because I'm not kidding. <laughs> this is amazing. But I wanted to highlight the fact that she's in here. Um, on page 137, it talks about why the Virgin is the Bride of Christ. And then it highlights St. Philomena, Virgin Martyr. She gave her life to remain pure. Um, so this book highlights her and her beauty and the, the way that she had um, went about just her courage to, to and her love for God. The fact that no matter the amount of pain that she would, would stood, she still did not falter. Who does that remind you of, you guys? <laughs> so then I want to go over 
another book. So that book in particular, you guys, um, The In Defense of Purity, this is, does not particularly highlight, um, well, it highlights her, but it's not dedicated to her. But this is an amazing book um, within and the analysis of Catholic ideas about virtue and purity. And it's just so beautiful and amazing. Um, and I will go over my um, beautiful, amazing, dedicated um, book for St. Philomena. I love her so much. She's just amazing. And I have had such... Oh my goodness, beautiful miracles as well in regards to my relationship with prayer, finding my faith and footing with God and following him. It's like she just has held my hand throughout the entirety of that journey in addition to God as well. Um, one of the most amazing books too is The Life and Miracles of St. Philomena, Virgin and Martyr. And it's just... It's so amazing, you guys, her story. Of course, I don't think I've done it justice, but these little saint studies are really good um, openers for us to really turn our face to other people and their stories of how God has changed them, healed them, or for the people that have just completely been preserved by their devotion and uh, in faithfulness it's amazing another book that i have um this is just insane um how many popes have been so taken with her since the 1960s it's insane you guys um it's weird because she has for the longest time have been um just kind of on the back burner and I don't understand why because she is so powerful um this is what the book looks like and um it's she, her, she has a nickname as dear little saint um uh, amazing absolutely amazing and I just couldn't talk about her more I, I really couldn't um this is another picture you can see her depicted with these symbols that she has um, and the fact that she's in the prison. Oh, so sad. Uh, and the fact that she was 13 years old. 13. That's crazy to me. Um, so I have this gorgeous um, prayer as well. But so yeah, you guys, I, but let me finish my thought before we go over the prayers. Um, these videos are buildable, right? I wanted to baby step us into the saint study and give you guys kind of the idea of honing your, you know, you know, a lot of people have different hobbies and interests. I implore you on your faith journey and on your prayer journey, have one of those interests be studying saints because I'm telling you right now, It'll do nothing more but inspire you endlessly like it has done me. And again, not every saint has the story like St. Philomena. Not everybody had has been murdered the way that she has. Um, oh my gosh, it just like breaks my heart. But um, a lot of saints have suffered. A lot have been and become martyred. Um, however, not every saint has had that um, experience. It's just insane the lengths of which a lot of us are willing to go for our love for Jesus and to end, to suffer endlessly. I mean, I don't know who wouldn't want to do that for God or who would want to um, suffer just, just for the sake of suffering. But, you know, when it's for your creator or your father in heaven, I can understand. And more so, I can be completely inspired and I implore all of you guys to as well. Um, so this is just the very beginning, you guys. And I want to tell you, St. Philomena will have multiple videos. I'm not sure if I'll do that with every saint unless I come across something that is completely um, just captivating and I have to share it with you guys. But St. Philomena is completely the exception and she has my heart. And I, I just know how much she needs a, re like a resurgence because sometimes throughout history in the last uh, gosh how many decades she has kind of faded and then come back and then faded and, and come back in terms with her popularity 
Um, you know, there are, there's a few schools within the United States um, that are, you know, St. Philomena schools that have her name and honor her. There's a, a giant um, Sacramento, huge statue in India. Um, there's a shrine, I believe, in somewhere in Massachusetts. There's a church in New Jersey. But the fact that she isn't at the, the forefront of how a lot of saints should be, in my opinion, I think that that's wrong. And the fact, again, like, there is a very particular way that the Vatican goes about canonizing saints. And the fact that she was on the liturgical calendar and that she, then she was removed um oh my goodness basically saying there wasn't enough evidence but that makes no sense because there are, there's complete and total um stories and testimonies of her miracles over people's lives um so i think that's that's completely barbaric to me um but yeah so her feast day even though it's not on the calendar i celebrate it it's august 11th you guys and we will end with a prayer. And then I also want to go over some other pictures. This is another depiction of St. Philomena. And the fact that she's wrapped in blue is amazing. Sometimes you can see like her name is spelled with a P. Sometimes you'll see it spelled the same way. But instead of a P, it's an F. Depending um, what you're reading. Whether if, if it's in Italian or not. Um, she's just beautiful. She's just absolutely beautiful. And I... I just want everyone to just have this amazing, oh my goodness, I don't even know how to explain it. Just this amazing um, hand literally hold, to hold from heaven because um, she's a direct line to God and it's amazing. So that's what I was saying. Like sometimes her name could be spelled just the, the one letter is a little different. Um, and then, so that is the Italian version and I think this is the French version where it's instead of with the A it's the N-E if I'm not mistaken but she's just what a beautiful princess she is um this is another amazing beautiful picture too oh my goodness um and then this is like I, I think this might be newer like the last 20 to 30 years, this picture was curated probably through technology of, of how she would have looked back when. Um, but yeah, and then this is amazing. So there are stations of the cross when we study God and his story and everything that has happened within scripture and history. Saint Philomena literally was martyred and this is literally her story and the order of how it happened. It's insane to me, like the synchronicity of what she endured, her death, the three days that she was imprisoned, and then to correlate that back to God's crucifixion. It, I mean, it, it, the entirety of the Stations of the Cross, it just blows me away. How she literally like, oh my goodness, she's amazing. She's literally amazing. And she was definitely kissed by Christ in the womb or something when she was being curated by him i'm not even kidding like she is just such such a pillar and everybody needs to, to know her and to get to know her and do intercession with her and pray 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 um and i know it's so small but it's just it's amazing so um, this is when um she is telling her parents that she is Oh, wait, wait, wait a second. This is when they go before Diocletian and she refuses him. This is when the parents actually beg her. They beg her to, for her to change her mind. And then this is when she's scourged. The angels heal her. Then she's, she's drowned, right, with the anchor. The angels heal her. She's shot with arrows. The angels heal her. Um, and then if I'm not mis... I don't know if um, they try to shoot her with arrows again. Or maybe this was a time she was imprisoned. Even the prison guards had accounts. And th these were years and years and years ago, obviously, you guys. But even the prison guards were, like, completely confused <laughs> as to what was going on and how she was just miraculously healed. Um, and then she was, you know, she was decapitated, which was the final. And she was welcomed uh, in heaven. But the f just uh, insane, you guys. 
there's one um, account on, I think it's a French website in regards to, to her study and all about her where I don't know if she had an apparition of Mary. Now, again, maybe this could go into the account of maybe that can't be proven, but there was some some account, I don't know if it was a prison guard or somebody, where it was either an angel or Mary herself that had presented themselves to Philomena in the prison and saying that she would be rewarded for what she had endured. And then she was finally, she was able to rest after the murder, which is so sad. Um, so let's finish the video, you guys. And of course, there will be a multitude of saint studies, but St. Philomena will always be one that I go back to add on and just improve because she's beautiful. Hail Holy Queen, St. Philomena. Of course, I call her a queen because she's a princess and queen in heaven, but it doesn't say that. <laughs> uh -huh. Hail Holy, St. Philomena, whom I acknowledge after Mary as my advocate with the divine spouse, intercede for me now and at the hour of my death. St. Philomena, beloved daughter of Jesus, and Mary, pray for us who have recourse to thee. Hail, O illustrious St. Philomena, so courageously shed thy blood for Christ. I bless the Lord for the, all the graces he bestowed at thy death. I praise and glorify him for the honor and power which with he has crowned thee. And I beg thee to obtain for me from God the graces I ask through thy intercession. Amen. St. Philomena is beautiful, you guys. All of the amazing sacramentals, and which I am still on the hunt for a statue of her, by the way. And this is in regards again She's very hard to find sacramentals and prayer cards on because she's so just not at the fingertips of the way other saints are. And that's so devastating. But she is amazing and she's beautiful. And I will link what I can below the prayer cards and books that I have. Um, note that this one does not, it's not dedicated to her, but she is in it. And she's highlighted in it. And this is amazing. Um but yeah, so um, this is just literally insane. The fact that she was 13 when she took her vow. Um, it's just, it's crazy, you guys. It's literally crazy. This was in the third century, by the way. I apologize if I didn't mention that. Um, but yeah, so it's just, she's amazing. Literally, oh my goodness. I, I can't even tell you enough how beautiful and how much she has impacted and changed my story personally and my faith journey. Um, I mean, she's amazing. There's so many people who have experienced her also, like, are just enamoring, completely enamoring. What a, a literally a symbol of purity she is. Um just amazing, you guys. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. She's just beautiful. <laughs> so this is the part where she was removed from the liturgical calendar. And I still, this still upsets me. And it forever will until she's included back on it. Um, but it's it, it happened in 1961. That's when her popularity, and when I say popularity, I just mean the fact that people know who she is. That's when it started to dwindle. Um, so a lot of people do know her, but not a lot of people do at the same time. Um, so yeah, that's like so sad. Um, so this is just, she's amazing. And of course, um, I'm going to have so many videos just for her because I, I can't, you guys. The next video in terms of a saint study, um, I don't know if I'll make Saint Philomena be a series in and of its own right. Probably I will. Um, so this isn't just the Philomena series. This is also Saint Study Part 1 or Episode 1, I should say. The next saint, I actually had a request to do um, a study on Saint Jude. So he will be next. Um, but yeah, so it's just... It's crazy. It's absolutely crazy. So this is a novena to St. Philomena. And then this is a litany. So a novena is prayed consecutively for nine days. 
Um, and we have yet to do that together. So I think she would be the great, um, that would be a great start to, to do that for, for her and with her. That, that's amazing. And then this is the litany of St. Philomena. Oh my goodness. Just beautiful. Beautiful. Okay, so then these are all of the popes that literally declared just how beautiful she was. Um, amazing. Amazing, amazing. I will link the little pamphlets and leaflets that I have down below. And then I'll also try to include some more information, you guys, like the different churches. Um, I've never been to India and I don't plan on going anytime soon. Um, but there's like, that's the only giant sacramental that I've like, f like found in my research is randomly in India, which is amazing and beautiful. But um, there is a shrine somewhere um, in the United States. And then obviously she's literally in Italy. So we have to go. All of us at some point, we all have to go <laughs> to Magnano and see her. That's just, it's it has to happen one day. So bye blue bells. I hope you have an amazing, beautiful weekend. Um, again, I apologize for the time, just the timeline of me pushing my schedules of video uploads. I am working on so many different things. I don't know if you guys saw my post. I just, just created my website. My portfolio's on there. I started a blog called Letters from Heaven, um, where I, again, try to do my very best for God to use my voice and spread his word and, um, miracles. Um... And I, I write different things on there. It just started. So I have one blog so far. But it's been something that I've been wanting to do for a while. And I can't wait to unveil everything else that I've been working so hard on. And yeah, you guys. So thank you for your patience and your understanding. Look for next week, um, the term study for chapter one. And also the video for our prayer board because we have to, to do that. It's so important. And then we will jump right into chapter two. Bye, Bluebells. See you in the next video. God bless.